So in the second part of this video tutorial, then we'll go over some basic string operations in Python. So the first thing to appreciate is that strings are sequences. So that means that they have a length, um, even if it's only one character long, or even if it's only zero characters long, and they can be indexed. And they can be indexed using a very similar notation to that which you use for lists or tuples. So for example, if we define here, um, and we'll use this string quite a lot, this is the, the standard phrase that happens to include every letter of the um, alphabet at least once, then we can ask how long is this string by using the len function, um, and then it tells us that it's 44 characters long. And though that's 44 not including the quotes that you need to define it. So the string the length of the string is just the contents between the quotes and doesn't include the, the quotes. And then, as I said, you can index the string um, by just simply giving it a the number you want of the the letter you want out of the string. Remembering that in Python we always index starting at zero, so this is zero one two, meaning it's the third letter of the string. And also, you can use various slicing notations. So here we're using a slice to give us the first ten characters, and again, that slicing format is exactly the same as you've seen before. Um, you have up to two colons and up to three numbers. If you miss out the numbers, then it assumes you mean the start of the string and the end of the string and uh, a stepping of one. So colon 10 um, means starting from the start and going up to, but not including character at index 10, which because you started counting with character zero means in fact, you've got 10 characters there. And then this example here, and if you use negative indexing, you're counting from the end of the string. And so I'm asking it from the fifth character from the end onwards. I haven't given it a number, so it's going to assume I meant the end of the string. Um, and so that gives me the last five characters in the string. And in this example, I've given it neither a start nor an end. So it assumes I meant from the start going to the end, but I've given it a step. I've told it to give me every second character. And so that's exactly what it's gone and done. One thing to note is that strings are what is called immutable, meaning you can't change them by trying to set the, by using the indexing um, notation and trying to set the value. So strings like that are not like lists, they're more like tuples where you, similarly, you can't change the tuple after you've created it. So if you do try and do that, um, so for here, trying to change the first uh, character of that string, it goes and tells you it's a type error because a, a string is not something which you can do do that with. You can also iterate over a string if you want to look at it letter by letter. So this is a consequence of it being a sequence. Um, this, of course, can sometimes be a bit of a source of a bug. So um, you might have situations where you, you think you have a list of strings um, and you think you're trying to iterate over that list, looking at each of those strings in turn but then you make a mistake and you end up iterating over, a, over an actual string and you end up looking at it letter by letter by letter. And, and the reason this tends to be a bug is because of course, Python will quite happily iterate over a single string as easily it would iterate over a list of strings. And it won't tell you that what you're doing is possibly not what you intended to go and do um, because there are circumstances in which you really do want to iterate over a string. Um, so that's just one, one little thing to watch out for sometimes. Anyway, so in this example, I've uh, used the enumerate function. So enumerate is a very handy function for using in for loops, which will go and return a number plus the first thing in its argument. So in other words, it's taking the first thing you get from iterating of a sim simple string and returning zero and that. So that's the letter T. And then it returns one and the second thing, which is the letter H, and then two and the third thing, which is the letter E, and then four. Uh, three and the next and the fourth thing, which is a space character, and so on and so forth. Um, so again, um, if you need to iterate over a string, you can do. Um, it's not always the most common thing you want to go and do. The other thing you can do and do is you can use certain mathematical operators. Now, it might not seem obvious why or how you should use a mathematical operator with a string. I mean, it's not actually a number. So what does it mean to say plus or times with the string? Well, one of the things Python can do is it can go and um, define certain operations you might want to do with a string. And it's 
implemented those with those mathematical operators. So there are kind of sort of special cases of using those operators. So the first example is the plus operator. If you do one string plus another string, then this is interpreted as a concatenation. So it glues those two strings together. Um, so of course that only works if you have um, just uh, a string and another string. You can't do string plus an integer or string plus a float because that's not a sensible operation. But um, to do string plus string works uh, just fine. And then the multiply operation is used to do repeat. So if I do simple string times some integer, then I'm going to repeat that string that number of times. It has to be a positive integer, I happen to say, because obviously string times a negative number doesn't, you can't repeat something a negative number of times. That, that just isn't a sensible concept. So you can do a simple string times three, and that's just going to repeat that simple string three times over. Um, and of course, it has to be an integer. Um, as opposed to, well, I mean, obviously it wouldn't make sense to, to multiply a string by um, 2.123 times. I mean, what would that mean? But equally, you can't do simple string times 2.0. So it's not good enough that it's a whole number. It has to actually be an integer data type, meaning it has no fractional part at all. Um, so... Um, uh, you can't do simple string times 2.0. It has to be simple string times 2. Um, on the other hand, uh, it is commutative. So you can do 3 times simple string as equally easily as you can do simple string times 3. Though Those both produce the same thing. They repeat that string 3 times over. The other mathematical operators, with the exception of the modulus operator, percent, um, are not defined um, to do anything at all in Python. And the modulus operator will come back to briefly in unit two. Um, it's not actually used that widely in, in modern Python, but it is still defined there. Um, the other thing you can do, though, is you can use in to check whether a string contains some substring. So, for example, we can check here whether fox is in simple string. Uh, now, just to uh, be clear here, what we're actually testing for is are the characters F, O, X in that order defined in simple string? As we'll discuss later, that's not actually the same thing as testing whether the word fox is in simple string. Um, because when you say the word fox, you're implying that it's got some uh, end of word characters like a space or a full stop or something else around it. Whereas this is literally just testing for the word less is F, O, X in that order. The inverse of that is not in, and so Z-E-B-R-A is not in our simple string. Um, all the letters are, but just not in that order. Um, and so that also comes out to be uh, true. The um, more complex um, testing of strings for certain patterns and so on will come back to in unit four.